This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. They did it! The UAW organized Volkswagen's plant in Tennessee. It's a historic moment, and I wasn't sure if they'd be able to pull it off. But workers strongly voted in favor of the union. 2,628 out of the 3,613 that voted, or 73%, said they want UAW representation. Past attempts to organize the non-union plants in the U.S. would sometimes seem promising at first, only to see workers vote no at the ballot box. But this time around, the UAW also had freshly minted contracts with the Detroit Three in its back pocket that included historic pay raises for their workers. And no doubt the folks at VW will want the same. Now, All the attention will shift to Mercedes to see if the UAW can convince the majority of its 6,100 workers in Alabama to vote in favor of the union. That vote takes place on May 13th to the 17th. And if successful there, it might make sense to go after another German automaker, BMW's plant in South Carolina, where it makes a lot of its expensive SUVs. But that makes us wonder, Will the UAW have a harder time organizing the Japanese automakers? Will we see more pay raises for line workers at other non-union plants in an effort to keep the UAW out? And when will it start working on those new contracts for VW workers? These are some of the reasons we have Wayne State University business professor Merrick Masters coming on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. So don't miss out on that. Tesla is facing some tough times in the marketplace. S&P Global says U.S. registrations of new Teslas fell 25% in February, which is a significant drop in sales. S&P says total EV sales in the U.S. fell 2.8% in February, meaning that Tesla lost market share. But if you don't count Tesla, EV sales in the U.S. were up a strong 32%, led by Ford, Rivian, and Hyundai. Also, over the weekend, Tesla cut prices by up to $2,000 for the Model 3 and Y in the U.S., China, and Germany. And in a shocking move, Tesla slashed the price of its full self-driving option to $8,000, which is $4,000 cheaper than it was recently and $7,000 lower than its peak price. That will likely lead to more customers adopting FSD, but we've got to think it's going to upset buyers who paid a lot more for it. And all these price cuts have Wall Street bracing for a drop in earnings at Tesla. The stock price was down 4% early this morning, and Reuters quotes one Wall Street analyst, Dan Ives of Wedbush Securities, is saying, Tesla's Q1 earnings report will be a moment of truth and, quote, one of the most important moments in the company's history. And as you know, Tesla was once the most amazing automotive stock to invest in. But over the last year, four legacy automakers performed much better. Toyota's stock is up an astonishing 70%. Stellantis is up 38%. Honda's up 31%. And General Motors is up 21%. So how did the other legacy automakers do? Check out the link in today's transcript or description box to find out that answer. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires. Improved acceleration in wet conditions. At a time when many companies are pulling back on EV investments, BMW's battery partner in the U.S. is expanding. Battery maker AESC announced that it's investing $1.5 billion to build a second battery plant near its first facility in South Carolina. The new plant is expected to start operations in 2027 and will supply lithium-ion batteries for BMW's EVs produced in Mexico. AESC's other plant provides batteries for BMW's EVs built in South Carolina. The new investment is expected to create over a thousand new jobs, and in total, AESC has invested $3.1 billion into its South Carolina operations. 
Nissan revealed the updated version of its Qashqai crossover in Europe. It gets a new front end design and the rear styling has also been massaged. The interior features new materials and design patterns depending on the grade and it's the first vehicle in Nissan's lineup in Europe with Google built-in. Other new features include an updated version of its around view monitor, which gives a bird's eye view of the vehicle to help with parking, and its suite of driver assistance features have been upgraded as well. Two powertrains are offered. The first is a mild hybrid, but Nissan didn't provide any details about it. The second is what Nissan calls e-power, but this e-power operates differently than some other e-power vehicles. It uses a three-cylinder turbo engine to generate electricity for the 140 kilowatt electric motor, or it sends it to the 1.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. There is no transmission. The electric motor powers the wheels. The new Qashqai is now in production at Nissan's plant in the UK, and the model is also sold in Canada, so it will likely see the updated Qashqai. Some of you may remember that the Qashqai had a U.S. version called the Rogue Sport, but that model went out of production in 2022. Automotive News reports that Honda and Volkswagen dealers in the U.S. are getting mighty nervous about Afila and Scout. Afila is the name of the joint venture that Honda formed with Sony to sell electric cars, while Scout is the new brand that Volkswagen created to sell electric pickups and SUVs. Both Afila and Scout want to sell directly to customers, and dealers feel like they're getting cut out of the picture. So a group of different dealer associations at the state level have banded together to threaten legal action if Afila and Scout adopt a direct sales model. The group, called the Automotive Trade Association Executives, took out a full-page ad in Automotive News. But they say so far, that they haven't had any response from the automakers. The new Range Rover Sport SV will have the biggest brakes the company has ever used. It's available with massive eight piston Brembo front calipers and 440 millimeter or over 17 inch carbon ceramic brake rotors. And that's bigger than the wheels on some cars and actually ties it with the Lamborghini Urus as the biggest brakes in the entire automotive industry. They're also 34 kilograms or 75 pounds lighter than the standard cast iron brakes and thankfully shouldn't wear out too fast. Range Rover said that four models at a track event did a thousand miles of on-road driving and 615 miles of track driving and the brake pads still had around 30% of their life left. For someone spending money on a vehicle that starts at $180,000, the cost of brakes is probably not top of mind, but there's still thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to replace, and will probably add at least $15,000 to the price tag, and I'm pretty sure that's on the low end. And the price of some raw materials needed for electric vehicles like lithium is plunging, but others are soaring. According to commodity trading company Trafigura, copper demand is expected to surge over the next decade due in large part to the growth in electric vehicles. It says that one third of the 10 million tons of new demand will come from the EV sector. The price of copper on the London Metal Exchange has soared to $10,000 a ton, and that's because supplies are tight and demand is outstripping the supply. Analysts estimate that the copper market will face shortages of 26 million metric tons this year. Maybe BYD feels like it's circling all the other global truck makers in the water because it just announced that its first pickup will be called the Shark. We know it's a plug-in hybrid with up to 480 horsepower and will feature an active suspension system but we should get even more details when it debuts at the Beijing Auto Show later this week. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, and by Tajin Automotive Technologies, 
the formula for better mobility. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems, yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. At Tejin Automotive Technologies, we combine world-class composite materials expertise with cutting-edge designs. Because frankly, there are better ways to lightweight vehicles. So lighten up with Tejin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.